Hi Internet, I'm Bethany. I'm a conservator and today I'm here at the Oxford University Museum of Natural History for the first ever Natska Conservation Conference. This conference is the first of its kind, bringing together museum and freelance conservation professionals on an international scale. The aim? To meet up, catch up, discuss and share some of the amazing projects we've been working on and new developments in the field of natural history conservation. As exciting as that is to them, you might be wondering, well, what is a conservator? What is conservation? And why does it even matter? My name is Bethany, I'm a conservator. My name is Carl Scotty, I'm a curator. My name is Ariana and I'm a conservator. My name is Jules and I'm a conservator. My name is Jenny Mathiason and I'm a conservator. I like to think of conservation as the management of change. So that could be anything from trying to slow something down from changing, trying to stop something from changing, or even trying to completely change something through the treatments that you do. Without conservation, you can't look after what you've got. And it is preventative, it stops problems from occurring, and it's restorative when needed to fix problems that have occurred. And to my mind, that is intrinsic to the management of collections. It's a fundamental aspect to museums that is, it can't be overlooked. Conservation is like the perfect Venn diagram between creativity, history and science and that's the best combination possible. You get to be creative, find solutions to stuff, you get to be like an investigator of the past and you get to use science. Wear a lab coat, it's amazing. <laughs> As conservators, we usually specialize in a material type, be it plastics, paper, ceramics, or in the case of our conference today, natural history materials. This includes taxidermy, fossils, botanical collections, even the dead things in jars. I mean, someone has to take care of them. And as the field of conservation has grown over the past few decades, new specialist subjects have emerged. Preventive conservation focuses on techniques to reduce damage to collections caused by the environment, be it light or humidity, or even insect pests such as moths. As natural history conservators, we consider ourselves to be some of the luckiest people in the world, having the opportunity to handle or even work on rare extinct species, being able to look up close at some of the amazing animals with whom we share this planet. We do what we do to preserve the richness of the natural world for the benefit of science and for the next generation of scientists to come. We love our specialist field and sharing it with anyone who will listen. Tell us about uh, the coolest object or specimen you've ever worked on. Tricky one, being a biologist, I just work on too many things that are fascinating in a natural history museum. Good examples would be the Blaschka glass models, which date back to the late 1890s. Mm -hmm. They're three-dimensional glass representations of marine animals and enemies, um, sea slugs, jellyfish, soft body forms like that, which were really difficult to preserve at the time. And these guys, the Blaschkas, the father and son team, were trying to make taxonomically correct models to show people the colours and shapes and forms of these things. A glass aquarium, if you like. It's just looking after that sort of collection, understanding how they've been put together, what they represent, and the fact they were made in the sort of 1880s, that sort of period. And when you're handling these glass things, a lot of people think, how can you handle them? But when you get to understand them, you can do all sorts of things with them. And, and they're just brilliant. Definitely one of the coolest specimens I've worked on is the blue whale skeleton. It took about three years from start to finish. It was the biggest thing I've ever worked on. The coolest object I've ever worked on was a narwhal that was in our collection. And when I started to work on it to clean it up, it had some really interesting damage on it, which actually turned out to be from a fire that it had burned at one point in time. The other thing about this narwhal that made it so cool was that the tusks are missing, but they had, somebody at some point had drilled two holes in sort of the roof of the skull, and you could see the roots. There had been two tusks, or there were two tusks growing, which is also really neat because two tusks narwhals aren't all that common. One of my favorites is a really giant, actually not entirely dissimilar to our friend here, really giant anatomical model of a frog. The skeleton was made of metal and like painted papier mache or something similar. And then all the muscles were wax with like thin strips of uh, almost like bandages inside and they'd all fallen off. So I had to watch a lot of dissection videos because turns out textbooks are not nearly good enough at teaching you frog anatomy when you really need to put back a frog. It was so cool. It looks amazing now. Okay, so it looks like a lot of fun, but why does conservation even matter? Conservation matters because the objects that we're taking care of are so unique. We need to keep these things in good condition so that they can be used going forward. Natural history collections really represent biodiversity on Earth. They're sort of like a fingerprint of biodiversity over time. The museum collections form a 
uh, an incredible resource to both our culture, our identity, to how we understand the environment, to how we understand the past. It matters in so many ways, and conservation is at the core of caring for that material. Conservation matters because it is the glue that holds museum collections together. Without conservators, we wouldn't have collections for visitors to come and see. We wouldn't have collections for researchers to come and do research on. Conservation matters because it's all about collections and making sure that they're going to be there for the future. That might mean preventing problems from arising, and it might mean fixing problems when they occur. And it's also about understanding the collections and the needs of the objects to ensure that you can look after them properly. So that's it, a small glimpse into the strange and intriguing world of the conservator. And next time you go to a museum, a historical house, or see a collection of any kind, you can be sure that somewhere nearby is a conservator doing their best to preserve that collection for you and for the future. Now I'm going to get back to geeking out, but if you have any comments, please leave them below.